Hi guys, it's Rihanna the Math Person. Before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you don't want to be bombarded with all these new videos, make sure you turn off that notification. Other than that, let's just dive right into this question. In this video, I'll be going over question 62 on SO exam P. So we'll pause the video real quick and try to spam yourself. Okay, as we attempted, let's just dive right in. So this f of x, the big f of x, has a little distribution from greater, less than 1, it's not in existence, so we're going to start at 1. From 1 to 2, it carries this distribution, right? And from 2 to whatever, it carries the distribution of 1. Let's say this is 1. So it carries like a distribution here. Oh, I can plug in 1 and see what the value is. If I plug in 1, you get 1 minus 2 plus 2 over 2. So at 1, it's going to be half. And at 2, it's going to be 2 squared. So 4 minus 4 plus 2 over 1, over 2. So that's equal to 1. So at 2, it's going to be 1. So it's going to be like a graph like this. So anything below 1 is going to be 0 here. So it has, as you notice from the big f of x graph, there is a discontinuity here at 1. So we got to make sure we take a special notice of this one because sometimes this jump carries a probability function, like probabil probab probability density that we're not aware of. And in this case, we do know that probability function from at 1 is actually a value of f of 1. It actually has a value of 1 half, and that's because it makes a 1 half of a jump like probably a 0.5 of a jump. But you can also think of it like probability function going from 1 to 2 of f of x is by the first fundamental theorem of calculus is equal to f of 2 minus f of 1. All right, so then from 1 to 2, it carries the probability function of 1 minus 1 half, which is equal to 1 half. And we know from anything greater than 2 has a probability function of 0 because it's a constant. So then we know that at this part right here, the only suspicious other part has to be 1 half because all probability has to add up to 1 half. And if from 1 to 2, it already has 1 half, and anywhere else is 0, and we know at 1, it has to be 1 half as well. Okay, so knowing that, we can actually dive right in. So at 1, it's going to be 1 half. And then from 1 to 2, it's the probability. We know this is equal to f of x times x for probability function. What is f of x? We know that's just the derivative of a big f of x. So taking the derivative of a big f of x, you get little f of x, which is equal to 2x minus 2 over 2, which is equal to x minus 1. So this is equal to 1 half times 1, technically, plus going from 1 to 2, x times x minus 1, dx. I'm going to multiply that x out, so you get x squared minus x, taking the derivative of 1 to 2. This part still stays a half. You get x cubed, 1 third, minus 1 half x squared, going from 1 to 2. When you plug in the upper limit, you get 8 third minus 4 half, which is just 2, minus 1 third plus 1 half plus 1 half, which is equal to 4 thirds. The second moment here is just going to be the same thing, but x squared. So this one's going to be 1 half x squared, so that's 1, one squared, plus going from 1 half f of x times x squared dx. So multiplying that out, you get 1 half x squared x minus 1 dx. Multiplying that x out, you get x cubed minus x squared dx. Taking the antiderivative, you get x fourth, 1 fourth minus 1 third x cubed, going from 1 to 2. Plus this part right here is still a half. When you plug in the upper limit, you get 16 divided by 4, which is 4. You get right here 8 thirds minus 1 fourth plus lower limit 1 third plus 1 half here. Don't forget. <laughs> so this is equal to 23 over 12. Alright, so then the variance then is we know from the variance formula it's equal to the second moment minus the first moment squared. So it's going to be over 23 over 12 minus 4 thirds squared, which is equal to. 5 over 36, which is our answer, C. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. Otherwise, as always, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. Bye!